Great Western Railway, often abbreviated as GWR, is the principal operator between London and the southwest of England, operating under their Intercity brand, their Thames Valley Commuter brand, and their regional brand for local services and regional express services in the southwest of England. Perhaps one of their more well-known and premium offerings is the Night Riviera sleeper service between London and Devon and Cornwall, which I got at an exceptional value for money. So join me in this video and we find out just as to why. Let's get this show on the rails. And we're here. Welcome to Paddington Station, the eastern terminus of the Great Western Main Line, which serves the West Country and beyond, which is actually where we'll be going tonight, on board the famous GWR Night Riviera Sleeper. I've heard really good things about this service, so I'm really looking forward to trying it out. So, let's get inside and see what we're in for. As far as London Termini go, Paddington is by far up there as one of my favourites. This is emphasised further by the design of the roof, which has been with the station since its inception in 1854. And I'm sure you'll agree, it looks absolutely fantastic, especially accompanied by the lighting, which really highlights the grand nature of its design. In front of us can be seen GWR's Class 387 and Class 802 trains, which form the backbone of their Thames Valley and Intercity services respectively. Other operators in the station include the Elizabeth Line, which we just travelled on to get here, and Heathrow Express, which runs non-stop between here and Heathrow Airport. Just adjacent to the platforms and right in front of us can be seen the entrance to the London Underground Lines. And of course, no tour of Paddington Station is complete without showing off the statue of Paddington Bear, the storybook character created by Michael Bond, named after the very station itself. There's also a drawing on the bench next to the statue depicting the bear enjoying his favourite marmalade snack, which, to be honest, is not a bad choice for a sandwich condiment. There's also a plaque just above the bench detailing further information regarding the book as well as the movie that was shot in this very station. If you'd like to read it, feel free to pause the video. These are located on Platform 1, exactly where I need to be to access the GWR First Class Lounge, which is available to Night Riviera guests from 9 o'clock onwards, although a point to note is that you need to be holding a sleeper berth supplement in order to access the lounge itself. I must admit that the first class lounge does look a bit more modern than I would have expected. Nevertheless, it is still rather impressive. And that's not all. We can also enjoy a wide range of benefits as a result of holding a sleeper berth supplement. For starters, all of these refreshments are complimentary and free for us to take and use. These include, but are not limited to, the snacks which I picked up here. Notably, a packet of crisps, a brownie, an oats and honey biscuit, and a bottle of water. I do like how there are many chairs to just sit down and relax here, although I would argue that there's no need to put them on the wall-mounted TV. I mean, what are mobile phones for, right? As well as there being a disabled shower located towards the end of the lounge, there's also regular showers and toilets located towards the main seating area. There is an equivalent one located in Penzance upon arrival, so I will be looking at this as soon as we arrive. Complimentary Wi-Fi is also available to all members of the lounge, although this is simply just the GWR free station Wi-Fi, so there's not really any difference in benefits here. I must admit the roof design is really impressive and really does couple together well with the overall architecture of the station roof, which is what I like about most stations in Great Britain is that you're, there's always a sense of history regardless of where you go. And after enough snooping around, here comes our train, which is formed of a Class 57 locomotive at the front, 
as well as one on the rear. In a past life, these locomotives were built and designated as Class 47s between 1964 and 1967, although between 1998 and 2004 they were rebuilt and reclassified as Class 57s, which is rather ironic considering Class 47s used to be the backbone of the Night Rivie era. The one thing I do like about the Class 57s is that they are each named after a specific castle in Devon and Cornwall, with this one being named Pendennis Castle. The front locomotive as well, 57604, was painted in a special GWR green livery to commemorate the 175th anniversary of the original Great Western Railway. Boarding for the Night Riviera commences at 10.30pm, which is in approximately a couple of minutes. Nevertheless, we still have a bit of time to admire the fantastic roof of Paddington Station in full view, which I believe is truly highlighted at night and is absolutely spectacular. The time is now 10.30 and boarding has now commenced, as can be seen from the queue of people waiting to board. They all need to be checked in by a host or hostess prior to them boarding, actually boarding the train. As we wait in the queue, I feel like now is a good time to talk about our route for tonight. The Night Riviera begins from London Paddington and traverses the Great Western Main Line as far as Reading, where the rear locomotive detaches and heads empty to Reading Depot. The front locomotive then continues down the Box and Hans Line all the way to Taunton, which isn't served on Sundays, and then on to Exeter St David's where passengers start to be dropped off. Then on to Newton Abbott and Plymouth, our last stop in Devon. Following this, we then go down the Cornish Main Line all the way down to our final stop of Penzance. Our scheduled arrival time into Penzance is approximately 7 o'clock in the next morning. Right, that's enough rambling from me as it's now time for us to board our service and take a look around. Let's get a move on then. As can be seen, Thank boarding you. is a fairly simple process. Just show the host or hostess your ticket and your room supplement and you're good to go. You will then be directed left or right depending yeah, on which cheers. carriage you've been allocated. On the Night Riviera sleeper there are seven carriages, four of which are dedicated sleeping berth. My reservation for this trip is Coach D berth 15L. As you can see there is another berth located in this carriage but not to worry if you're a solo traveller. No one else will be booked with you you'll have full solo occupancy of the room, such as I did. Before we do a room tour, let's have a look at the other features of the Mark III sleeper coaching stock, which, despite dating from the 1970s and 80s, do seem to have been refurbished rather nicely, as evidenced by the large accessible toilet towards the end of my carriage. These are a PRM requirement to, for the coaching stock to stay in service beyond 2020, and as you can see, they do look immaculate both inside and out as to be expected from a premium offering such as the sleeper. There is also a standard toilet located just adjacent to this. As I've previously mentioned, the Night Riviera sleeper consists of seven carriages. We're currently in the fifth one, which is the dedicated lounge car. This carriage is dedicated to serving refreshments as well as meals. And if you're a berth holder, an added perk is you also get complimentary drinks and snacks although these are similar offerings to those in the GWR First Class Lounge. I'll put a PDF menu in the description so you can read it a bit further, but for now, let's just admire how modern and immaculate this bar is. As is common with the Mark III coaching stock, the door here is not only used to access other sides of the bar and more food and drink, but also to the seating area on the Night Riviera sleeper. The seating area comprises of the last two carriages of the train, and the cost of these is no different to that of a standard single between London and Penzance. Although, it's worth noting that I honestly would not do this unless you're on a serious budget, as sitting in these seats, let alone trying to sleep in them for eight over eight hours, can be rather difficult to do, especially as the train is in motion. At the end of the second carriage are two rather large luggage racks, which, for a sleeper service such as this, you would expect especially given that a surprisingly large amount of people use the seated areas. At the end of the first carriage is a rather large area for cycle storage, which is rather generous, but then again,
quite a lot of people, I would imagine, would use it. And that's about it for the walkthrough. Before we head back and do a room tour, however, let's look at how to open the door. First of all, lower the window here, and then, after which, lean your body out of the window, and then grab onto the, onto the latch of the door. Then push down the latch, and then push your body forward to open the door. And that's about it. To close the door, pull the handle, wait to hear a slam, and then push the window up. On my way back to my room, I did manage to get some more complimentary snacks from the bar, which includes similar ones to those which I obtained in the first class lounge. Anyhow, time to take a look at the room now, which is unlocked upon entry. The first thing I would recommend you do upon entering the room is to pick up your key card, which enables you access both in and out of the room. The key card functions as a fob access system. To operate it, just tap and hold the card onto the lock interface and open it as you normally would. To lock the door, just close it and turn the dial as appropriate. The bed itself I found to be rather plush and comfortable, much more so compared to the Caledonian Sleeper, which is the other service in the UK, which I'll be checking out soon, so do subscribe so you don't miss the video. The same could be said for the pillows, of which I have two, but then again, the second pillow would normally be for the other occupant of the room. Speaking of the second bed, there is a ladder located towards the door on the bed, which is used to access the second bed. That being said, it is rather difficult to operate so single-handedly, especially as I'm a right-handed person. The ladder is rather sturdy despite its flexibility, which gives me great comfort should I be travelling with someone else in the future on the Night Riviera. The second bed itself, much like the ladder, is a foldable style, although I won't be giving a demonstration in this video, considering I won't be using it. There is a foldable tray located right next to the bed, which is useful for when you have breakfast delivered to you in the morning by the hostess. I'll detail this further in the video, as the hostess still needs to check me in. There are three light switches located towards the end of the room. The one on the right operates the main light switch. The one in the middle operates the mirror light switch, which can be seen just to the right of us. Whereas the one on the left operates the night light, which is located just above the pillows. Just next to the light switch is a power and USB socket, which operates in the same manner as it would in your household home. Not only is there a second one located just above the first one, there's also one located just underneath the bed. How cool is that? And located just next to the power sockets are the room service buttons, which can be used to call for a host or a hostess as and when necessary. You are also given a face cloth on what appears to be the table, as well as a small bar of soap, as can be seen to the right. These can be used to wash your hands and face on the retractable sink, which is operated by opening the foldable table. Quite a nifty little design, which is also found on the Caledonian sleeper stock. To operate the taps, just press the face of them once and they should flow naturally on their own. Although, I do feel like they could have been a bit more powerful, despite their rather nice water flow. The window blind located here is to close open the window and maintain privacy, as well as block out any light while sleeping. As can be seen, it is relatively difficult to operate, but once you get the hang of it, it's fairly simple to use. A bin is conveniently located beneath the table and the sink, and just opposite the bed, which makes it handy for disposing of any rubbish. Storing my rather large bag wasn't really much of an issue, as I just used the stand located just above the desk and the sink, which was perfectly adequate for this trip. And last but certainly not least is the cupboard. To operate this, gently push it forward and then pull it as you open as you normally would. There are also two bottles of water here, which are free for us to take and use. As if I don't have enough of those already. But then again, I am getting my money's worth. Located just above the water bottles and to the top are some coat hangers, as well as instructions as to how to operate the top bunk and the sofa. And then to close the door, simply just close it as you normally would, although the right one typically goes first. Located just behind the door are some stands which act as coat hangers. And finally, there's also a door stop, which is how the room stays open when you first board the Night Riviera sleeper. The host, or in my case hostess, unhooks the door upon checking into the room, as well as takes your breakfast order and books you a shower slot. My breakfast is scheduled for 6.30.
Well, seeing as it's now quarter to 12 and we've now departed Paddington, I feel like that's an indicator that I need to get some sleep. So, it's now time for a good night's sleep and let's see where we end up when I wake up in the morning. Good night. thousand years later. And a very good morning. It's actually 20 past five right now. So that can only mean we are in Devon's largest settlement, which is Plymouth. And this is the last stop in the county before we cross over to Cornwall via the Tamar Bridge. I don't plan on staying awake for much longer as my breakfast is only at 6.30, so that gives me another hour of sleep. So, let's go back to sleep and we'll wake up when breakfast arrives. After another refreshing hour of sleep, we can now be seen passing through Bodmin Parkway at 6.30 in the morning, after having made a calling point here. The station itself is located three miles away from the town of Bodmin and is our second stop in the county of Cornwall. Shortly after leaving the station, breakfast is served and I opted for golden syrup porridge and I was given a Belgian chocolate chip cookie even though I didn't ask for it. I also got some orange juice which is pure not from concentrate so that's good to know as well. Now that daybreak is here we now have a view of the Cornish countryside which is looking rather gloomy as a result of the adverse weather. Nevertheless we're still able to enjoy some scenic views whilst travelling at the line speed of 75 miles an hour although currently we're at 65. It's worth noting as well that the maximum speed of the Class 57 is 75 miles an hour, specifically for the Night Riviera sleeper. Our final stop of the trip is St Earth, which is located approximately 10 minutes away from our final stop of Penzance. As such, I feel like now is the appropriate time for a conclusion, but before I wrap up the video, it's time to put the keys away, which can be done in the box next to the doors. Don't want to be taking that with me, as that will be an absolute headache and a half. Overall, I have to say I was pleasantly surprised with GWR's Night Riviera Sleeper. Having had many miserable journeys with them throughout the year, this has definitely made up for those by a huge amount, and I would honestly say that the value for money is absolutely exceptional, especially as I got one of the lowest rates you can pay for a solo occupancy berth. My one criticism is the lack of ensuite rooms, and lack of luggage space in the rooms, as opposed to the Caledonian Sleeper. Although, I would argue that it is much better value for money than the Caledonian Sleeper, especially given the amount that you have to pay for it, and the technical difficulties with their new stock. But that's just my opinion. What did you think of the GWR Night Riviera Sleeper service? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But in the meantime, welcome to Penzance. Thanks very much, have a good day. And a very good morning from a rather damp and wet Penzance, where we arrive at just about daybreak. Before I conclude and wrap up the video however, it's time for us to have a look at the GWR First Class Lounge, which as a berth occupant I have full access to. As with the GWR First Class Lounge at Paddington, access is granted to the lounge once you show your ticket as well as your sleeper reservation to the member of staff. The offerings here are no different to Paddington, with the same refreshments and snacks offered as you would get there, albeit in a much smaller space. I think the thing I like the most about the lounge is that whilst at face value it does look rather small, I did find it to be rather big in comparison, which is great. Also located in the lounge is the nameplate on one of GWR's HST sets, which is St Michael's Mount, a castle which you can see on approach to Penzance. My shower slot was originally booked for 8.30, however I jumped at the chance when I was told that there was an earlier slot available for one of the spare ones. The shower itself is rather spacious and clean, and includes both a sink and a toilet, as well as a towel and a towel rack. The inside of the shower itself is again really spacious, and the thing I like the most is that the, swi that the switch for turning it on and off is located towards the door. And finally, hair dryers as well as a towel bin are located just outside of the main shower. And with that, my look at the Night Riviera sleeper service has now come to an end. And on that note, I would like to thank you so much for coming along with me on this ride today. If you did enjoy this video, 
please do give it a like as well as share it as that really does help the channel to grow. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing as well as enabling notifications as I'm now uploading new videos every Friday at 5pm. I know what you're thinking, leaving so soon? Yes, the journey must continue, even as the weather's getting better, so it's now time for me to head north and continue my journey home. But anyways guys, thanks again for watching, take care, stay safe, and I will see you next Friday at 5pm. Goodbye.